in there. Well, we have a special guest joining us now live from L.A. Speaking of musicians, she's singer Fanita James. And Fanita was a member of the group The Blossoms. They sang backup for everyone from the Righteous Brothers to Elvis. Welcome to the program, Fanita. Oh, hello. How are you? You play any instruments, Fanita? I play, I play a little piano. So if your friends know you, you've probably p played the piano for them, haven't you? Well, see, well, I'm not that good, so I, I just wouldn't <laughs> volunteer to sit down to play something, I'm, truthfully. You know, you know, this is something else that amazes me about professional musicians, Fainita, is that people like me who can't, you know, carry a tune, we worship people like you. And yet musicians are always telling me, oh, you know, my voice isn't that good. I really don't play that well. I mean, what, what's going on? Oh. You are perfect. You are in the blossoms. Well, you know, most entertainers are introverts. They really are. And uh, they don't really project themselves well. And on stage, they're a different person altogether. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah, it really is. And that, that must be it. Well, how'd you get started in the music business, Benita? Oh, my. My dad was a singer in a, a gospel group and I uh, started singing when I was three. I was in a group in grammar school. There was three of us. In high school, there were six of us. And then um, that's when we uh, went to see, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Eddie Beal. He was our vocal coach and he taught us everything about music, took us to Capitol. And we were all different colors, you know, and that's when they named us the Blossoms because they said we look like a bouquet of flowers. Oh. And that name stuck. Oh, that is terrific. So how did you get connected with Phil Spector? Well, uh, we were so fortunate, uh, the Blossoms were. We did most of the work out of L.A. Uh, with Elvis Presley, uh, even Buck Owens, you know, and um, James Brown and just everybody back in those days they called us the LA sound then so he hired us to do some backup work but then uh, he did a song called he's a rebel and he wanted the blossoms to do that you know but then we found out he put it out under the name of the crystals mm. and that kind of hurt a little bit you know but uh, at the same time we had a number one record in the country even though it wasn't under our name yeah for many many weeks He's yeah, a rebel. So it, and you know what, uh, Finita? I, I'll, say that, I'll say this for Phil Spector. I've heard a lot of people talk about this. It was the early 1960s. Mm -hmm. There was a big, solid mm -hmm. wall between white music and black music back in those days. And as you say, right. uh, Phil Spector really seems to have reached across that color line to work with you and a lot oh. of African-American artists, didn't he? Did he ever? You know, I think he was best at that. Oh, and even with the Righteous Brothers, whom we worked with on the road and in the studios, they had the black sound. So he was just excellent with them also. And Tina Turner also. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to give the guy credit for that. It was a very different time back then. It reminds me of the movie and the play he Hairspray. Was a yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. But, you know, when, when it, it was done back then, they, they uh, used groups and change the names all the time. You know, it was just one of those things they did. Of course, Everybody, were, all of the Of course, you were back up. I, I haven't forgotten about that. Right, we're going to talk to you more in just a minute. From the Blossoms to the Beatles, Phil Spector's prolific career earned him a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Up next, we'll take a look at how he got there. Stay tuned.